Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is, is just a porridge of some uh, cooked yellow split peas and some vegetables. And uh, there's lots of different vegetables that could go in this, but it's not too critical which ones go in or don't go in. There's a bunch of spices I'm going to put in at the very end. And the thing about these spices is not so much which spices you use, but how you yeah, use them. Okay. So, okay. I am the, I lacked uh, celery today. And because I didn't have celery, I went out to my garden and grabbed some lovage. Lovage is an herb that has a very strong celery flavor. Uh, it used to be used in ancient Roman cooking and uh, Elizabethan cooking. Um, you'll, you'll recognize it. As a, as a celery flavor. For the tarka, what we're going to do, we're going to get a little bit of oil. Ooh, hot. That, that's hot oil. And we're going to put in some uh, black mustard seeds. Black, black mustard, mustard seeds. seeds. Yum. If you have faith, there's a mustard seed. We're going to sort of slowly fry that. So this is, we're going to fry this until they start to pop, until they start talking. They're just muttering now, but you soon you'll hear it when I talk the difference. That's called muttering mustard seeds. Muttering like a rock band. <laughs> Now, Indians use more spices than any other culture. A lot of other cultures use other herbs and other stuff, but the Indians like spices. Okay, so it's smelling, uh, the, the mustard changes its. You'll hear it. Okay, it's starting to. It's starting to burn. Smells burn. See how it's starting to pop? Yeah. Doing this sort of slow motion. Okay, I'm gonna put in some cumin. Cumin seeds. Cumin seeds. And a little bit of chili, uh, red chili. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. But when frying it, will sort of attenuate the heat a little bit. Uh -huh. Like a man of science at work. Turmeric. Turmeric. You can't have too much turmeric. You can't have too much yeah, you're right. And if you don't have enough, Michael will probably sell you some, right? <laughs> and gin, uh, ginger. Nice. Ginger. Dry ginger is different than wet ginger. You had a bunch of wet ginger earlier. And that drink the, in there, the India Joe's uh, ginger and cooler is very heavy. And ginger. I heard that. Mushrooms. Play with some mushrooms. Now, for mushrooms to attain their full majority, they have to touch fat before they touch water. Oh, oh, that's the secret. My wife says good morning. Why is that? Why is that? So why do they have to get fat before water? Uh, because you want the fat to get uh, soaked up in the mushroom. Uh, 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 so the fat inside the mushroom will hold the water at bay. Because water, a wonderful thing. You know, uh, you know what fish doing it. So you know, we gotta be very careful about having too much water. Yeah, you can. Garlic. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> can never have too much garlic, right? Too much garlic. Too much garlic? No, there's no such thing as too much garlic. No, no. The best chef salt with garlic and sweet with onions, right? <laughs> so are you? I'm just repeating what I hear. I come from, uh, my, my great grand, my grandfather was quite a great cook, but I remember visiting him once in Canada, and, and he was cooking something, and my dad came up with a jar of garlic salt. And 
he was so horrified. <laughs> <laughs> he was very quiet, but I mean, I didn't know at the time. I was six, you know. Like, oh, God, it's all God. That's true. That's the nice thing about walking. Walk a mile for that. I love it when they do that. To make that easier, we're going to put a little salt in it. One of the secrets of Indian cooking is it takes a lot of salt to make it taste right. Um, whether that's a good thing or not, I don't know, but it really won't taste the way it should unless you have enough salt in it. Ah, activating those taste buds. All right. Beautiful. Is it That's illegal colors. to eat just the mushrooms the way that is? Because it looks so good. Oh, yeah, no, we can do that. Oh, yeah. And the, the secret of all those relishes that you do, those could have been the basis of a dish. You could just mix cook chicken with any one of those, and you'd have a dish. Right? Oh, my so God. Why didn't I think of that? You push up all the flavor around in lots of different directions. All right, so... You'll notice these are starting to sizzle but as the as the water is coming out of the mushrooms. Yeah. It's related to the chili, but it's not hot. But it's got the sweetness of the chili. I love how great guys. You want to make sure that this isn't sticking. those tomatoes go? We're going to put some canned tomatoes in here. Because we're going to cook this a long time, there's no reason at all to use fresh tomatoes. Just to waste. Because the difference between canned tomatoes and fresh tomatoes is that canned tomatoes are cooked. <laughs> so, we're going to let this come together. Just happen to have a few. And cutting Alright, so... This is a, those of you who are vegetarian probably know that calamari is actually a mobile seagoing vegetable. <laughs> and, uh, these are really wonderful calamari. We have the best calamari in the world. Uh, all over the world, calamari fans here buy Monterey Bay squid. Unless you go to the wharf. If you go to the wharf, you get crappy Chinese squid. Um, why that is? Well, obviously, it's cheaper to get it from China. But um, instead of outsourcing the cleaning of this calamari, we're going to demonstrate it for you so you know your own self. Now, one of the things about cooking is that cooking and this preparation, we seem to think that it's, it's better if we get somebody else to do all the prep for us so we can just cook. But actually, prepping, prepping is an integral part of, of the cooking process. So it's really fun to be able to do it yourself. All right, so calamari are easy to clean. There's no reason to buy the pre-cleaned pre stuff. There is no good pre-clean calamari. I can state unequivocally. None of it, I mean, some of it is okay, almost edible, but it's really, if you've ever had the real thing, it's very different. Okay, so, calamari. Learn something new. Uh, cut it ahead of the eyes, squeeze out the beak. There's a, it mm -hmm. looks just like a parrot beak, if you want to. Oh, yeah. See Close that? Oh, yeah. See that little? Yeah. I'm not sure if it shows. That and little dark part. A sharp little guy there. Yep, yep. Right? Uh -huh. And you don't want to eat that. It won't hurt you except for, you know, it's like eating a piece of glass. Okay, you cut open the the uh, squid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, the back's the easiest. Do I have my sharpener here? Um, then you uh, scrape out the guts. Now, most of this is actually edible. But we don't usually bother. Um, and then that's that's it. Now you can take the skin off it. Why you would bother, I don't know. Get out the beak. And some anybody wants to see able to see this. Um, this is a Chinese cleaver. This is a Balinese cleaver. Very different shape. They're both they, they both are wonderful. Um, scrape out, make sure you get that, this little piece of quill. This is 
This is made out of chitin. Those of you who have uh, contact lenses, yeah. it's made out of this stuff. Really? Oh my God. What? <laughs> chitin. C H I T I N. Yeah. All right, so. Now, by far the most popular calamari dish is the, the fried calamari. Um, so I'm going to just show you that. We got a little more flour here, don't we? Oh uh, yes, we do. Um, if the if these are big, beautiful, thick calamari, if they're that big, you actually want to flatten them a little bit. Oops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to waste that. No. No, it just needs another rinse. Again, just open her up. Now, if, if you wanted to take the skin off, or, there's, there's other things you can do. And uh, the calamari eating uh, peoples of the world have all kinds of ways. You can get the skin off like yeah, this. Right, right. Scrape and then it, it off? Ju then it just looks, just with a reverse knife, see I'm scraping it like that. Mm -hmm. And you can get it like that. Yeah, yeah. But why? You know, the, if it's very, calamari is the most of, um, perishable of all the fish. Oh. And old calamari does not taste good. But part of the reason the Chinese stuff's so bad is they, they catch it, they freeze it, they thaw it, they clean it, they refreeze it, they sell it. Oh. That extra freezing thing really takes it out of the poor calamari. Yeah. Anyway, um, the other thing you can do with calamari is uh, you can score it. The, the Chinese are really good at this. Oh, yeah. It's called a pine cone cut. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you, if you do this, it'll all cook this in. It'll curl up and it'll cook all, all pretty. You can actually buy them pre cut. Oh, really? uh, all right, so. So where do you get your calamari? You um, I get it. Uh, the, my my wholesale guy has been in Santa Cruz forever. Just uh, now, uh, all the calamari is caught in uh, between uh, uh, Morro Bay and Half Moon Bay. That's this kind of calamari. Uh, this there's 600 species of calamari, and there are some other good ones, but that's what our market squid. It's called Lolago opalescence because when it's very fresh. It looks like an opal. It has blue and green colors. It's, it looks like a jewel. The only thing that makes it okay to eat, they have very short lifespan. They only live about 14 months. They, uh, when they're caught during the breeding season, they literally would be dead within a couple of days whether they were caught or not. I mean, obviously, they would rather have babies, but um, uh, it, this is not a fishery that's in any real danger, as far as we know. Um, I almost got this here. But you can see why restaurants get pre-cut calamari. Imagine, you know, if I had 20 people walk in that wanted calamari, how the heck, you know, could you do it? But, I mean, one of the things about food, one of the reasons I love to cook is, cooking is one of the ways you can make your love for somebody manifest. You know, when they're eating something, they know they're eating your time. They're eating the time that you spent making stuff. And uh, so... the love that you put into Well, yeah. Energetically. So, anyway, I'm a big fan of, of putting as much energy into the food as I can. And we're going to cook this up real quickly. So, do you always cook your own food? Well, I, have, I, I used to have a staff of 80 people. And now I have, now I've, my staff here has done a wonderful job, as you know. Yes, indeed, uh, they I, have. You know, I'm too selfish to let them do very much of the cooking. Okay, so I have flour here, uh -huh. and I'm going to put some salt in it. Oh, salt. Salt, and a little bit of paprika. Okay. And a little bit of pepper, if I can find my pepper grinder. A beautiful pepper grinder. Pepper. This is with vice grips, so I don't, I, I'm never without my vice grips. All right, so. Sort of say something and then toss that around. <laughs> this is that's all there is to it except for frying. Wow, that's now, I am gonna fry this because uh, I mean, I do it. I, mean, I wrote the book, you know, I've got a hundred different ways of doing calamari, and frying is only one of them. But as I say, this is a very popular way, and uh, this is flour and salt and paprika and pepper. So very simple. Uh, in a perfect world, I'd let this sit for like three minutes before I fry it. Okay. But we're hungry now, and I got to get back to my doll. So it'll take. Maybe somebody 
Um, it'll take very little time to cook. Alright, well, let's uh, Fresh calamari. Oh, fresh calamari. Yeah, let's. Alright, I'm going to 